Thank you so much for coming out so early on a Saturday morning. I would like to welcome you to the fourth sold out program for Equity by Design Symposium. So why does equity matter? Why are we talking about equity? And what is the confusion between equality and equity? We hope that by the end of this, you'll be able to look at your own career and identify your own roadblocks. How do we transform the workplace? How do we improve personal satisfaction? How do we raise awareness of architecture's value? And so we're so excited to share with you today what's ultimately 8,664 individual stories that come together to paint a new picture about what architecture looks like. The important thing to know is that it goes beyond architecture. Equity matters for everyone. We'd like you to take this card and write on it what your commitment will be to equity for the next two years. We need to expand the idea of what an architect does and what an architect looks like. And that is where this work today will move us forward. This is at the end of the day by you. You gotta dig deep. This is for you. This is about the rest of your life. And more importantly, this is with you. None of this happens without you. One of the things that our industry is struggling with more than anything is not a lack of projects. There's a lot of work out there to be done. Our problem is a lack of access to talent, that there are fewer and fewer people actually going to architecture school, and then that we're losing so many people within their first five years out of architecture school. So every firm in this country are all asking the question, how do I hold on to people? There are aspects of the way the profession works that are difficult for everyone, that it's still operating with these ideas about what it means to be a professional that don't really fit the lives of men and women. It's damaging to us, but it's also just damaging to architecture. Equity goes beyond just architecture. Equity is the core of how we can promote success and just opportunities in society. To say, hey, we're all in this together and everybody deserves to have a fair shake or opportunity at success. And how can we support each other to optimize that to make that happen? It's just about creating an environment where everybody can thrive because ultimately creative fields really benefit from diversity. And the best projects really anticipate an environment that embraces everyone in the same way. This is a design profession. We design solutions to things. And equity by design kind of captures that. How do we get to equity by applying design thinking to the problem? So upon its completion, the survey garnered 8,664 respondents, uh, making this the largest survey ever conducted on the topic of equity in architecture. The Equity by Design survey really came out of conversations that we were having, the core group, realizing that the piece that was missing for us was data. The first part of advocating for change is to show there's a problem. Data is what informs our activism. Everybody talks about what they think is happening, but data is facts and no one can really turn their back on data. Today we're going to be presenting you with two different frameworks for looking at equity within the architectural profession. Through the lens of career dynamics, we're going to explore issues that impact us all, regardless of our level of experience. And then this afternoon, we'll talk about career pinch points. These are personal and professional milestones that have the potential to cause real roadblocks in our careers. In 2016, we wanted to broaden the conversation and really focus on equity. And so the question there, isn't, are you succeeding by classic measures? It's, does every single respondent have the tools that they need to thrive? Does somebody have access to firm leaders? Does somebody feel included in the decision-making process at work? Do they have strong relationships? Things like that that you wouldn't think mattered actually are the biggest drivers of whether or not somebody gets ahead in the field. And that's true regardless of race or gender. And so I think moving forward, we really want to push the conversation in a direction where we're focused on getting everybody those tools. We should mirror the communities that we serve and we design for, and the demographics are changing. So if we don't change, we're going to be left behind. We need to scrutinize the ways we set up teaching and learning so that we don't inadvertently socialize students into practices that harm them and harm the field. And if we want people to be engaged in the profession and stay there, we want to talk about their growth and their trajectory and what their intentions are for being a part of the profession. So if we're really so good at making life better for our clients, let's find ways of measuring that 
then we will get completely out of this calculating our value based on a one hour transaction. The tactic I always took was not, this is an activist movement, or this isn't fair, or we need quotas. It was, we are leaving money on the table for our clients. And that definitely gets people's attention. Increasing the value of what we do, and then ultimately getting paid more for it, is literally the rising tide that lifts all boats. My value far exceeds that 40 hours a week that I'm sitting here. My value is the things that I dream about doing and the things that I am doing. The whole symposium is this sort of crowdsourced environment where people are just saying, I'm interested in this, I've thought about this topic, I've designed this experience with my colleagues here and I'm about to launch it and see what happens. If we can leave from this particular place with a concerted effort to take on these issues, not only in our practices and, and procedures, but in the actual design that we do, uh, I think we're better off for it. We definitely want them to go away with solutions to problems, specific things that they can do. I can go to my firm and say I'd like for us to do this to advocate for the larger group. It's really important to have these moments where people come together and be able to talk about, question, debate, um, and brainstorm about how to move forward and make change. Now I feel like we have enough information, now it's about action. Now it's about actually, you know, walking the talk. At the end of the day, it's big and it's messy and it's energetic. And so people make new friendships, they make new connections, and hopefully through this sort of mishmash of all of these different perspectives that people come away with insights and more importantly, people come away committing to do something different in their own lives. Remember, today is the first day of the rest of your life. And make that commitment in the next 24 hours to do something, anything, because we're going to change this profession and we're going to kick butt doing it. Thank you.